Well, all right, again, welcome back to this installment of the Gutowski Files starring Stephen Gutowski. He is the founder of TheReload.com and the host of the Weekly Reload podcast and a stalwart, that's a word I'm bringing back, stalwart reporter. Stephen, how are you, sir? LuckyGunner.com is my go-to resource for in-stock, fast-shipping ammunition. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, go to LuckyGunner.com for the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. They have stood by us all in this ammo pandemic, given us great education via their YouTube channel and their ballistic testing as well. Go and check them out and find great ammo ready to ship at good prices. I'm doing all right. Uh, You know, it's game seven tonight. I think you usually get these episodes out really fast now. So yeah, this, this should this be out the same day. So we're, we're recording this October 24th, 2023. So this yeah, should so. be coming out probably about the same time that game is starting, if I had to guess. Hopefully everyone who's listening will, will be rooting for the Phillies. Uh, that's my assumption. Um, I, you know, I know that you are, a, you know, we've kind of taken on the Diamondbacks here. Yeah. Eh. I mean, you live there, so yeah. I, I mean, you you would think uh, a friend of mine that I went to the academy with once commented that uh, back when the Redskins were terrible. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, and and uh, the Chargers were doing well, and I lived in San Diego. And he goes, "Why don't you just claim the Chargers?" I'm like, "I don't know. It just doesn't feel right." You know, like I, I mean, you shouldn't. To be honest right. with you, uh, this is a whole thing. Uh, we we don't have time to get into it on our on this show here. But if we do a sports podcast and a pop culture podcast, this is a complaint I have about Taylor Swift, who is supposed to be a big Philly, you know, she's from, from Reading, Pennsylvania, and she sings about Eagles and all, you know, all this stuff. And yeah, uh, she's dating a Chiefs player now. So right. she's wearing Chiefs stuff and going to all the Chiefs games. We'll see what happens once she gets to the Chiefs Eagles game. Um, but yeah, you should stay a fan of the team. Especially, you know, Philly, yeah. Philly, here's the thing about this game tonight. And uh, then we can move on to real news. But, um, the Phillies should win because if the Phillies lose, if the, if the Diamondbacks lose, I'm sure it's, you know, their fans will be sad and it'll be like, Oh, that's too bad. You know, great run and um, get them next year. Proud of the team. The Phillies lose Philly fans will go and like, they'll just become deeply depressed uh, probably for years. People still talk about the 1964 Phillies blowing a 12 game lead going with or a 10 game lead with 12 games left to go. I wasn't even born then. And I know all about this mm-hmm. uh, because it gets talked about constantly. That's, that's how neurotic and that's how much it sticks with you. when when Philly teams disappoint in that way. So I don't know, I'm just saying for karma's sake that maybe the, you know, let's, let's all root for the Phillies. And I, I know, I, I know how Diamondbacks fans can console themselves because as a young lad uh, watching the Redskins frequently lose, um, being from the DC area after a loss, my father would say, Michael, don't feel too bad because tomorrow morning when all those Philly fans wake up, they'll still be in Philadelphia. So that's, that's <laughs> kind of how I, it's kind of how I get through the night, I guess you might say. Um, with, with that said, uh, there is an article over at the reload.com. It's from about four or so days ago. Um, it is authored by our, our friend, Stephen Gutowski and the, the, Headline is Jewish Americans arm themselves in wake of Israeli horror. Um, and this is something we touched on before, but this is a slightly different angle. So, Stephen, talk to us about this article that you wrote and uh, why it's something Americans should consider to be important or interesting to them. Yeah, I mean, this is this is first off the obviously back to a much more serious topic here. But uh, this is one of the things that we do at the Reload that I think is is paramount, is important, this sort of reporting um, where we're talking to first sources to people directly to tell their stories, because you know we do a lot of reporting on on uh, rulings and and politics and stuff like that, and that's all s- extremely important too. But uh, you know this sort of exclusive direct reporting is is what I think um, really sets us apart and the real purpose of what what we're trying to do. Sure. And um, you know we in the wake of the those attacks, you know more than 1400 people murdered, uh, mostly civilians, um, Jewish people obviously targeted for being Jewish in, uh, in Israel. Uh, and then of course you saw, in addition to that, a lot of protests nationwide and around the world, frankly, that, uh, oftentimes went 
beyond just pro-Palestinian protests into anti-Semitic, um, uh, you know, uh, messages from the river to the sea is is basically a message that the entire country of Israel will be wiped from the earth, face of the earth, right? That's... There, there were, not to interrupt, but there were protests um, I saw footage of in, in Australia where they were chanting gas to Jews. So it's not like yes. this is, you know, no one's trying to be subtle about it, apparently. Yeah. And look, you know, obviously it's a complicated situation, uh, as are a lot of situations in the Middle East. And this isn't to, um, you know, try, try to take a side on exactly what the right outcome of the the political situation in, in the Middle East is supposed to be. But it is clear when you put uh, images of the, the paragliders who uh, went across the border to slaughter people in Israel as part of your iconography and your protest that you're essentially just supporting slaughter. Like mm -hmm. that's not, these aren't, you know, that's not, uh, I don't like the Israeli government's policy on settlements or something. This is like, yeah. we support beheading people and burning them alive. And so you can kind of imagine how that that's had a psychological effect on uh, Jews worldwide. And particularly here in America, where many of these protests occurred, um, and they also have realistic access to firearms for self-defense that has driven a lot of American Jews to go out and buy their first gun to get more training uh, if they already had firearms. And the change in culture or surrounding firearms within the Jewish community has been stark, according to uh, the numerous sources that I spoke with, both first-time gun buyers and Jewish gun rights activists who, who uh, have been involved either relatively recently or for their entire lives, uh, they all say that this is something that has really changed the point of view in the community regarding firearms.